I've survived swimming in the Arctic and the Antarctic. Two poles, two edges of the ocean, in just half a year. Nothing has moved me like this time of polar living. Nothing else brought home the power of the planet and the even greater power of our species to destabilize its workings. I've been so mesmerized that in a way, I've stayed at the ends of the earth ever since. My first pole, the Arctic, was supposed to be a one-time volunteer gig that would plug into my two great loves for a couple of weeks, teaching teens and hanging out with scientists in the wild. Instead, it set up a fierce longing in me to kneel on the continent of Antarctica and taste the Southern Ocean spray on my lips. It was as if I could not be whole until I had understood these two planetary siblings that could not be further apart. The Arctic Ocean has been covered with ice for the past 47 million years. Today, they say that the Arctic will be reliably navigable by the summer of 2013. Signs of warming were everywhere in the north. The Inuit kids talked about the robins they see now, the ice that no longer forms even during the winter in the harbors where their families used to hunt, the permafrost that's no longer frozen, the spring that comes earlier than when they were little. There are only about 25,000 polar bears left on the planet. That's according to the World Conservation Union. Some experts are predicting that the last polar bear will die within decades. A generation ago, biologists worried that the big threat to the bears was the hunt. Now it's the heat. I smelled the walruses before I ever saw them. I heard them honk, honk, whistle and snort. And then there they were, nearly a thousand on a single barren island. I watched them for a long time, marveling. But like the polar bears and most other polar wildlife, they're in danger too, because they depend on the ice, and the ice is melting. My trip to Antarctica began two days after Christmas in the southern summer. Antarctica is the more mysterious of the two poles. No human eyes caught sight of the continent until 1820. No one reached the pole itself until 1911, and no one lives there permanently. Larger than Australia, it contains 90% of the ice on the planet, and some of it is as much as five kilometers thick and as much as a million years old. When at last we sailed far enough south to set eyes on the continent, it was wrapped in mist. I could barely tell the sea from the sky. Wandering albatrosses, which have the widest wingspan of any bird alive, swooped down to follow our ship. Humpback whales leapt playfully out of the water dozens of times, just a few meters from our bow. Penguins tracked our wake, skipping in and out of the water like porpoises. Harawina Island, near the western peninsula, is home to one of the largest Adelie penguin rookeries in the world. Roughly two million birds live there, including the newborn chicks in rocky nests. As the air and the water warm up, the sea ice near this part of the continent is melting, and the tiny shrimp-like krill that are key to the Antarctic food chain are dying. With the heat, the penguins are moving further south to breed, but the summers further south are not long enough yet for them to raise their chicks. By the time I headed toward Deception Island, I was feeling pretty grim. I hadn't expected the signs of cataclysm to be so clear. In the early part of the last century, whalers towed 100,000 slaughtered humpback and fin whales through the narrow channel there, rendering their blubber bones and brains into oil in huge metal tanks. I trudged onto this sooty beach and then into one of the huge tanks that's still standing, made from bands of riveted iron many stories high. It is decaying now, returning to the earth. I looked up to see light streaming through holes in the roof. Remy Rodden, a Yukon singer and songwriter who was on the Arctic trip with me, was there with his guitar and his harmonica. It became a cathedral where it was impossible to sing a sour note. We made music there for two hours, otherworldly harmonies, the notes seeming to vibrate through our very cells. 
and then Remy began channeling the whales with his voice. I followed, making sounds I never believed possible. We made peace and joy in that terrible place, and it felt like redemption. <laughs> 